It claims to be the ultimate Second World War strategy game, but is there any merit behind such bold claims? Well, there just might be. Let's talk about it. For the uninitiated, Panzer Corps II was released by Flashback Games for PC in 2020. The original Panzer Corps was a spiritual successor, I guess you could say, to one of the greatest World War II strategy games ever made, and probably hands down the best I've ever played, Panzer General. Panzer Corps II is of course a turn-based strategy game focusing primarily on Axis forces throughout the entirety of the war. Starting with the invasion of Poland in 1939, You'll battle across Europe, Africa, the USSR, and potentially other continents. The game also features both single and multiplayer gameplay, giving you plenty of options to explore. The campaign itself consists of about 60 wide-ranging missions spanning all of World War II in a variety of map types, from completely land-based to crossing bodies of water with landing craft backed up by the Luftwaffe. You'll have a wide array of options to fully customize your experience, whether you're new to the genre or a hardened veteran, and anywhere in between. From basic difficulty options to advanced options such as weather, supply, and turn limits to special challenges that can test even the best players. If that's not enough, you can even balance dozens of strengths and weaknesses to guarantee that no two games are ever truly the same. The game also features over 1,000, yes you heard that right, 1,000 unique, upgradable, and highly detailed unit types that become available as the war progresses. Units gain experience through both wins and losses, they earn commendations or traits, and can be assigned heroes that give even further bonuses, and can even have their uniforms, paint, and camouflage fully customized. Panzer Corps II also offers up a multitude of multiplayer options. You can play with or against other players online, you can play using play-by-mail, or by sharing the same PC in hot seat mode. You can even play cooperatively at the very same time online, which is pretty slick to be honest. The multiplayer mode adds more than a dozen scenarios for multiplayer action, as well as skirmish mode that includes a random map generator from uh, six map types and four mission styles. Now that we've introduced a few of the game modes, let's take a minute to mention some of the many game mechanics that the game uses during gameplay. I won't get into any real detail for each, but in any case, here they are. So outside of combat, movement is going to be a major determining factor in how your battle goes, and includes rough terrain, mountains, rivers, the ocean, and other natural obstacles, as well as other hindrances such as ambushes, encirclement, and weather which affects air units' ability to operate. In some cases, you'll be able to enable or expedite travel using air, boat, and rail transportation. Combat itself is quite deep and has an enormous array of game mechanics that can take most any situations into account. They include the basics such as entrenchment and suppression, initiative and experience. They also include things such as close combat, supporting fire from artillery, and counter battery artillery, anti-tank weaponry, and fighter support. To further add to this, encirclements and resupply, mass attack, recon, and of course individual unit specifications. So yeah, there's a quite a bit to contend with, but it all honestly comes together beautifully, while the predicted results really help to simplify expected outcomes. I'm not going to get into too much detail about the units themselves as you can see them throughout the video, but let's just say the selection is vast. Anything and everything that was used and developed during the course of the Second World War has been included. Well, mostly. The detail in the graphics was something that I had initially overlooked as I would rather play zoomed out overlooking the battle. But when you zoom in at the units and the terrain you really get a true sense of scale and how much work was put into the graphical elements of the game. The units themselves are also very well animated and really come to life during combat. So while many of us would still play if it looked like it was drawn out on an Etch-a-Sketch, the updated graphics are still very much appreciated. The sound effects and ambiance that the game provides have been extremely well put together, feeling accurate to my ears at least. Combined with a really solid orchestral soundtrack, the game has an epic period correct aura about it. Moving on to voice acting, it's solid, at least I feel like it is anyway with the German accents I'm not honestly all that sure. Either way, I have no complaints. Rommel has suggested a reconnaissance in force. To probe the state of the British forces, yeah? The game starts off following historical events of World War II, but strays away from the history books as you progress through the game, 
The creative license here has done really well, carving out a path of what-if scenarios to ponder and explore if the Second World War had gone a different route. The scenarios, mission briefings, and general storytelling has all been well thought out. The adjustable interface looks great, it is well laid out, will also be completely accessible using only the mouse. Keyboard shortcuts, of course, will speed things up dramatically. To help acclimate new players, the game offers a pretty decent introductory tutorial to get you acquainted with the interface and basic game mechanics. As discussed earlier, there's a whole plethora of game options to suit not only your abilities and experience, but your playing style and how much of a challenge you'd like to face. This is a game that can be relatively easy to pick up, but hard to truly master. Panzer Corps 2 will easily take 60 plus hours to complete the campaign, which in itself can be replayed many times over and take different paths through the war, depending on how you've progressed. The nearly unlimited number of customization options also ensure that you truly never play the same game twice. The multiple player game modes also add a whole other dimension to the game, and if that's not enough for you, there's also plenty of additional DLC available to expand the game's content. These are made up of smaller campaigns and together form one enormous campaign where your army can progress from one completed DLC to the next, a nicely added touch. But wait, there's more! The game includes a full featured editor that allows you to create scenarios for single and multiplayer games as well as full on campaigns if you like. And if you don't feel like doing that for yourself, the game also offers full Steam Workshop integration for virtually unlimited content. The first game had an enormous amount of extra free content created by users, and the second game is well on its way. If you love the game, you can really enjoy this one just about indefinitely. Let's finish this one off by saying that if you like the first game, or any of the Panzer General series, are a history buff, or just love a solid turn-based strategy, you just can't go wrong here. In my eyes, with its solid graphics, great soundtrack, excellent gameplay, and unlimited replayability, Panzer Corps 2 is a winner all around.